Ladies and gentlemen, Season 4 presents us with vendors that sell all the trinkets from all the raids that we have seen in Dragonflight, along with some other interesting items, so let's talk about which are the best options that we have right now. Every raid so far provided a trinket that has a primary stat and a bunch of secondary stats attached to it. Even if those trinkets are not your best, they're probably pretty high on your list, you have to do your own research, but then which one of them is the best? Well, that depends, let's start with the Whispering Incarnate icon which you can buy from the vendor on the right with the items from the first rate. This trinket provides the most secondary stats, but you don't get to pick what you're going to have. Healers get Haste, DPS gets Crit Strike and Tanks get Verse. You can also get the other secondary stats from the other roles if there are people in your group or in your raid that have the trinket equipped. That's a big if, so you can talk with your teammates if you're in organized group or organized raid to figure out who's getting what, as you get a lot more value out of this trinket if there are different roles who have it equipped. But overall this is a pretty solid choice, especially if the main secondary stat that you're gonna be getting suits your spec and class. If it doesn't, then it's very likely that the trinket that you can get from the middle vendor in the second right items, the Omnius Chromatic Essence, is going to be much better for you. Overall it provides a little bit less secondary stats than the Whispering Icon, but you get to pick what those secondary stats are going to be. The downside, you have to fly around the Dragon Isles to click that trinket in front of some of the old stones there to change the stat that you're getting, which could be annoying if you're switching specs or you need different stats, but overall it's a pretty solid choice as well, especially if you have other people in your group who attune the trinket to a different old stone. It's optimal to have 5 of these in your rate with every person attuning their stat to a different old stone, so you have all the 4 secondary stats available, plus one person who's not going to attune theirs to any, which gives a bunch of all the secondary stats. And that leaves us with the last option, which is from the vendor on the left, containing items from the most recent raid, and this one is the well familiar Pips which has the upside of not depending on other people in your raid having the same trinket to unleash its full potential. However, there are two downsides. First, it gives you the least amount of secondary stats overall, as it gives you a little bit of secondary stat and then it has a big proc for 12 seconds when it changes to a different stat. That also means that sometimes you're gonna have your best secondary stat, but sometimes you're gonna have the worst. It's definitely not a bad choice, but the other two trinkets could outperform this one, especially if you have more people equip them in your group. The other big note to make here is that all these three trinkets that I showed you so far have all three primary stats available in them, so it doesn't matter if you're playing Strength, Agility or Intellect class. The trinkets will adapt and they will also switch their primary stat if you switch to a spec that uses a different one. In many cases you can get two of the stat stick trinkets that I showed you so far and you'd be totally fine, but depending on your class and role, there might be some other lucrative options. If you're a healer, you definitely heard about the Roshox Molten Heart. You can get this trinket from the middle vendor and on paper it sounds amazing as it gives you mana, it puts a hot effect on your target and it also grants versatility. It was in fact one of the best trinkets during season 2, but ever since it got some nerfs and the numbers don't seem that amazing right now. Don't get me wrong, it's actually a pretty good trinket, but I wouldn't spend my bullions on that personally, if it drops from the rate and you get it, that's fine, but otherwise you should probably look elsewhere to invest your currency in season 4. The same stands true for another trinket that you can get from the vendor on the right, the Conjured Q Globe, which gives you mana back if you're low on mana, but you can use it to do damage if your mana is looking fine. I was even hesitant to include that trinket in the video, but since there are not that many good healing trinkets this season, apart from the stat sticks, that's another option that you can use, but again, don't waste your bullions on it. Another trinket that it's worth mentioning when it comes to raid healing is the Smoldering Seedling that you can get from the vendor on the left with the items from the latest Amidrasil raid. This one is a little bit weird because you have to use it, it summons a seedling in your feet, you have to heal it up to even do more healing after that and if you succeed it gives you mastery. 
It has some very nice niche situations where you can get a lot of HPS out of this trinket, but there's also some very weird cases where you have to heal the seedling. So I would suggest to use this only at your own discretion if you know how to use it and you feel comfortable doing so. Another interesting trinket that you can get from the same vendor is the Blossom of Armidrasil, the trinket that drops from Farak. This one can also do a huge amount of HPS, but it doesn't have a primary stat, it has haste instead. So as a result, it actually looks good on the healing meters, but what you don't see there is the amount of healing that you lose from the lack of intellect on it. I'm personally not a fan of this one, and that's another trinket that I would say don't spend your bullions on. Let's do one more honorable mention for a trinket that comes from the right vendor, the Brute Keeper's Promise, which you can use to target an ally and it's going to give you a little bit of versatility and restored health per second. It's not that bad overall, but in fact you're going to get much more value out of the stat sticks instead of this trinket, even if you decide to use it on your tanks, which are constantly taking damage, so it would benefit them as well. And now you're gonna say, but none of these trinkets were suggested to spend our bullions on, and you would be right. None of them are actually that amazing for healers, and I would suggest just invest your bullions into the stat sticks that I showed you in the first section. And I also say that there is one trinket that I would consider buying with bullions on my shaman, but it is actually a DPS trinket and it comes from the middle vendor. The Screaming Black Dragon Scale has a chance to proc and give you a lot of critical strike and leech, which of course is only good if your class scales well with crit strike. As a bonus, it has a use effect that can do damage in an area, but only if you ranged, so that the orb that you shoot out travels at least 15 yards. It's a very specific trinket, probably better for M+, rather than raid, and it also fully benefits you if you range instead of a melee, so in most situations the statistics trinkets will probably give you more value, but this one is definitely worth considering in some rare cases, especially Restoration Shamans in the current season with their tier set. And since the lack of lucrative alternatives, I'm going to mention two Mythic Plus trinkets that you can use until you manage to get your hands on the stat sticks that are probably going to be best for you. Spoils of Neltaras gives you secondary stats on a 2 minute use cooldown, but it's a little bit tricky because the type of stats that you can get changes based on the RNG of the spells that you're casting. You can more or less try to control this, but overall it's not a bad trinket as it gives you a lot of stats every 2 minutes. And the other option is the Water's Beating Heart that comes from the Halls of Infusion last boss. This one is actually not bad at all, but it comes with a big disclaimer. It gives you a lot of verse and a shield, but in order to get that, you have to dispel yourself when this trinket procs. This could be extremely tricky in situations where you have to dispel other things, either in dungeons or raid, and if you don't dispel yourself, you're slowed down and you lose versatility. So this is basically a two-edged trinket. If you're like me and you like switching to DPS every now and then, there are a few very fun trinkets to play with this tier. Of course, sim yourself to find out which is best for your class and spec, but definitely worth mentioning is the Manific Grief Torch. It's a small channel that does a ton of damage and the cooldown is significantly reduced if somebody dies, so during progression this is actually an amazing trinket to play with, so some classes can actually squeeze out incredible amounts of DPS from this one. During Season 2, the Echo of Neltarion would drop some class-specific trinkets that were very, very rare. In fact, they were so rare that I've actually never seen the Shaman one drop in the raids that I participated in. But now you can actually buy them with bullion, so if you wanted to test them out back then and you didn't have the chance, you can definitely do so right now. You of course have to check what is the specific trinket for your class, is it good, is it bad, etc as some of these were overpowered, but some of them were not that good at all. And since this is a fun segment, we should probably also mention the Beacon of the Beyond, which is another trinket with on use that does significant amounts of damage and scales amazingly with some classes. So if you're DPS, definitely check these out, along with the other DPS trinkets, as it's quite possible that some of these might be outperforming the stat sticks that we mentioned in the beginning of the video. And last but not least, few more items of interest, the vendor on the right sells two rings. 
which have extra effects that can proc if you deal fire damage. One of them is going to do more fire damage, the other one is going to give you an absorb shield. Now obviously those are only valuable if you can have abilities that do fire damage. But if that's the case and the stats suit your class and spec, then those are definitely something to consider, as you'll be getting extra value for free out of this prox. Another very interesting item is a cloak that you can buy from the middle vendor, it's called the Voice of the Silent Star. It has a special effect, but it comes at the cost of not having any stamina on that item. If you're not worried about survivability, you'll be stealing some of the worst secondary stats of your nearest allies, granting you increased effect of your highest secondary stat instead. So definitely an interesting option that can increase both your DPS and HPS as long as you are alive. And last but not least, you can use the vendor on the left to buy two weapons, one of them is a staff, the other one is one-handed. Both of them have some DPS options included as use or procs which could be quite good in M+, but they don't have any significant healing implications. And that brings us to the end of this video, obviously the stack sticks are probably going to be the best options for you, no matter what class or spec you're playing, but do sim yourself and research a little bit to find out what's going to be the best options. Let me know in the comments below what you're gonna be using your booleans on, I'll see you guys in the next video, now get out of here.